Suspense. And the producer of radio's outstanding theater of thrills, the master of mystery and adventure, William N. Robeson. It is said, revenge is sweet. But is it? Can the eye of your enemy restore your sight? Or his tooth chew your daily bread? Or his life resurrect your beloved dead? Such questions do tonight's story raise, not forgetting the while to keep you in suspense. Think about them as you listen and listen well. As Myron McCormick stars in Madman of Manhattan, which begins in just a moment. Welcome, William Bendix. Nobody can act up to par with a nasty cold. I check my cold distress the fast way with four-way cold tablets. Yes, tests of four leading cold tablets proved four-way fastest acting of all. Amazing four-way starts in minutes to relieve aches, pains, headache, reduce fever, calm, upset stomach, also overcomes irregularity. Four-way is the fast way to relieve those cold miseries. Then you feel better quickly. Four-way cold tablets, only 29 and 59 cents. Here's a word about another fine product of Grove Laboratories. Had dandruff for years? Now get rid of it in three minutes with Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo. Three minutes with Fitch regularly is guaranteed to keep unsightly dandruff away forever. Apply Fitch before wetting hair. Rub in one minute. Add water. Lather one minute. Then rinse one minute. Every trace of dandruff goes down the drain. Three minutes with Fitch. Embarrassing dandruff's gone. Fitch can also leave hair up to 35% brighter. Get Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo today. And now, Madman of Manhattan, starring Mr. Myron McCormick. A tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. of authority. Come here. You can always tell by their voices. Sign out. Commanding. The smaller the authority, the more commanding the voice. You hear me? Yes, sir. Sign out, you said. Here? Right below where you signed when you came in. Of course. Oh, perfect forgery. Beg your pardon? Oh, I mean your signature is an almost exact copy. You object? No, sir. Do you think you're talking to one of your, uh... Lunatics upstairs? No, sir. Sir. Always call me sir. I enjoy being called sir. Good night. Good night, Mr. Westland. Sir. Walk slowly. No need to hurry. No need at all. That's right. Light a cigarette. Must be some in the pockets. Yes. What brand did Mr. Westland smoke? Hmm. Excellent. Light it. No need to run. There won't be an alarm for at least 20 minutes. Why think of that? No need to think of that. One look back over the shoulder, casually. Casually? It's pleasant to be on the outside looking in after two years in an insane asylum. What do you have? This is a restaurant. Are you kidding? And you're a waitress. Lovely waitress. Look, do you or don't you want something to eat? I'd much rather look at you. Look, mister. I'm going to take you out of all this. Oh, sure. Furs, diamonds warm against your skin. Hey, let go my hand. Your name is Faye. I see it embroidered on your uniform. Faye. Mm -hmm. Now, Faye, listen to me. The manager's looking over here. I'll tell you something you can tell to your children. To your children's children and their children's children's children. A comedian. Now listen, this will be the biggest thrill of your life. I just escaped from Bellevue. What? I'm Lacey Abbott. Been in the psychopathic ward in Bellevue for two years. (laughs) You don't say. Nicholas Westland, my lawyer, came to see me. When we were alone, I strangled him to death. Huh? Yes. I changed clothes with him, signed his name on my way out. It'll be in the papers. Yeah, I'll I'll remember to read about it. I had a wife once. Kate. They say I killed her. So I must have killed her. Sure, you killed her. No, I didn't. 
Martin Avery killed her. Sure, sure, Martin Avery killed her. And now, what are you going to have? Martin Avery. That's what I'm going to have. Anyone minding the store? I'm coming, I'm coming. Oh, hello, Pop. Well, what do you want? Got something you want to hock? Don't bother me with it. Everybody's selling. Nobody's buying. You got me wrong, Pop. I'm a buyer. I want to buy a forty-five automatic. Got a permit? No. You from the police? Nope. Got any identification? Yeah. Lawyer, huh? That's right. There you are. Be thirty-five dollars. Thanks, Pop. I won't forget this. Neither will uh, <laughs> a friend of mine. In a moment, we continue with the second act of Suspense. With your permission, we'd like to talk shop for just a moment. CBS Radio Shop. Recently, one of the foremost publications in the broadcasting field polled 465 critics and editors the question, which radio network programs do you rate tops? When the answers from these 465 experts were tabulated, the final ratings were overwhelmingly one-sided. Total honors accorded CBS radio programs exceeded those of all the other networks combined. Let's put it another way. The final verdict of hundreds of critics, reviewers, and editors was that CBS Radio had more top shows than all other networks put together. CBS Radio was pleased, naturally, at the result of the poll, but not surprised. Great programming is no accident. It's long been a policy of this network to devote every effort to maintaining the highest broadcast standards. Whatever listening fare is for you, you can be sure you're hearing the best when you're tuned to CBS Radio. And now, starring Mr. Myron McCormick, Act Two of Mad Men of Manhattan. A little late to call on Martin Avery, but our business won't wait. May I blow your brains out, Mr. Martin Avery? Thank you, sir. How do they say it in the movies? Do you want it in the belly or the back? Your choice, Martin. Your choice. Lacey. May I come in? Lacey, you're in Bellevue. But you see, I'm not. They'll find you. They'll find you first. I don't expect anything from you, Lacey. You're a sick man. I feel sorry for you. I have my wife and child, my son, here in the apartment, so put that away. This gun? It's just to keep your voice down. It's a toy. It can't hurt. It killed. Put it down. Well, wouldn't you like that? After all, Lacey, we... We were friends once. You wouldn't kill me. I just killed Nick Westland. That's how I escaped... Westland? You killed Westland? You can always find another lawyer. Shouldn't upset you. Anyway, he wasn't your lawyer. It was mine. Never liked you. He liked me. He was trying to help you. He did. What do you want with me? Company. Company? That's what I missed most of all, Martin. Can you believe that? Company. Two years, no one to talk to. Oh, a doctor, sure, but not really anyone. Two years, Martin. No one ever came to see me, to talk to me. I'm sorry. Why didn't you come, Martin? I, uh... Well, I wanted to, but I didn't think it would accomplish anything. Just to say hello for old times. Look, I told you, I didn't think that... Relax, Martin. It's going to be a long night. Maybe you won't see the end of it, Martin. Depends, we'll see. Depends on whether you say things I want to hear, whether you do things I like. It's up to me. 
Yes. I waited a long time, and now it's up to me. Look at him. Look at Martin Avery. Standing alone in the study of his better homes and gardens apartment. Alone with only me to keep you company. Yes, everything must be going exceptionally well for you. Everything must have paid off for you. But I notice as I move about the study, turning off the lamps, that there's a trace of perspiration on your forehead. Does it affect you? Just a little? Being alone with a madman and a gun? Night? What's taking place behind the steady eyes, Martin? You thinking? That would be fatal. That was my mistake, thinking too much. Watch me, Martin. That's right. Never take your eyes from me. I want you to keep watching me. For then you can't help but think about it. What did you say? I want you to think about it. Think about what? Whatever comes into your mind as you watch me. The police will come here looking for you, Lacey. Police? You know that. Why should the police want me? Well, you killed a man. Yes, but you killed a woman. Now, Lacey, I can help you. I'll get you some of my clothes. Call a cab, get you to a small hotel somewhere where they won't recognize you or care if they do. Now, Don't talk to me like that. Everybody talks to me like that. You just come along with me. We know best. Lacey, it's just a matter of time. Remember, Martin, I'm crazy. I'm not responsible for what I do. You're as responsible as anyone. You know what you did when you killed Westland. Now you're saying I'm not crazy? You know what I mean. I'm either responsible or I'm not. If I'm responsible, then I'm a murderer. If not, then Nicholas Westland's death was an unfortunate accident. But the question of my responsibility was all taken care of in court two years ago, remember? You testified against me? I told the truth. Did you? Yes. I was the only one that knew you were lying, Martin. You knew I told the truth. Where are your wife and your boy sleeping, Martin? Answer it. Go ahead, but hold the receiver up so I can hear... Go ahead. Hello. Mr. Avery? Yes. This is Lieutenant Creekmore, police. What is it, Lieutenant? Is everything all right up there? Yes. Everything is all right. You sure? Yes. Have you heard that Lacey Abbott escaped from Bellevue tonight? Yes, I heard. Then you know about Nicholas Westland? Yes. Poor guy never had a chance... We thought Abbott was getting better, but... Yes. It's too bad. The reason I called you, you know how Abbott feels about you. He may try to get you. You think so? He might try, but you don't have to worry, Mr. Avery. I have four of my best men covering the front and rear entrances to your apartment house. Well, I, if he I, shows I... up, we'll get him. Good night. Aren't we fortunate in having such a solicitous police force? Look, Lacey, let me get you out of here. You go down to the second floor landing, and I'll call the men up from downstairs and tell them you're up here. See, that, that'll that give you a chance to get out. You didn't answer my question, Martin. Where are your wife and son sleeping? In the back bedroom. Through that door and? Straight back. Down the hall. And the nursery? Look, why do you... The nursery... Just... Half of the bedroom. Does she have black hair? Like Kate? No. She's brown hair. It's almost blonde. How old is your boy? Uh, a year and six months. Yes, I remember. Someone told me you were married while the trial... My trial... Was in progress. Yeah, that's right. One year for the trial, two years in the insane asylum. I, I wish there was something that... Oh, there is. All right, what? Just tell me. Why did you kill my wife? Tell me. Now be quiet. You'll wake him up. Let me tell you a little story, Martin. A fantasy, a bedtime story. Listen to me. Once upon a time, there were two men who went into business together. Things went pretty well. The business prospered and things looked pretty good. Everything was 50 50. 
Each partner had 50% of the stock in the company. That's fair enough. Then along came a big bad menace. A corporation that wanted to buy them out at a nice round fat figure. One partner wants to sell, the other partner no. The partner that said no had a wife. Let's call her Kate. And it seems his stock was negotiable in Kate's name as well as his own. If you'd only... Shut up. The partner that wants to sell, that's you, pulls a fast one while I'm out of town and gets Kate to sign away everything. But before I got back, she saw what you were doing. And right there, right there, was where she disappeared. No! And I wonder who it was that saw to it. I wonder who it was that killed her. You're still out of your mind. It's just a fantasy, Martin. A fantasy that with your few well-chosen words at the inquest started them looking at me. Wondering about me. Wondering why I was away. What I'd done with the body. Lacey. Such nicely chosen words. Such as... I'd noticed he hadn't been himself lately, but I just thought it was over work. Look, you've got to listen. Thanks, partner. I do thank you, and I stand ready to repay you, Martin. Where's her body? I don't know. Martin. Look, it was never proven she was dead. Let's say it was taken for granted. Give me the gun. Hmm. Advanced psychology. You must have been studying. Give me the gun. Response to the command, isn't that the way it goes? Response to the command sometimes works the impossible. The subject will sometimes obey your command against his better judgment. Give it to me. No, Martin. Give it to me. No, you can do better than that. No, come on, more, more, no. more, more noise, more, come on. You uh, uh, might come in and see. Uh, 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 better. I knew you were going to jump me. You know I could have killed you. Why didn't you? You haven't told me what I've got to know. What would you do if I walked over to that door and just walked out? First, I'd shoot you on the shoulder. Or the leg. And maybe the other shoulder. I don't want you dead. Not yet. Look, Lacey, I never harmed you. I swear that. I swear it. Tell me, where is Kate's body? I don't know. Tell me. I can't. Through the door and down the hall. No. Just off the bedroom? No, not the boys. Lacey! Tell me! No, I can't. Lacey! Don't lock me in. Come back. Come back! You, you, Lacey, you can't. Hand! Get Johnny! Lock your door! Hand! No! No! Hand! Johnny! No! I'll tell! I'll tell! I'll tell! I'll tell! In a moment, we continue with the third act of Suspense. A word of advice for those of you who suffer from acid indigestion, heartburn, or gas. Who do you know about the little white tablet in the little green pocket roll? Just a waiting for the moment when you need them to bring your acid indigestion under control. Tums are the little white tablets in the little green pocket roll. Tums for the tummy. than you'd ever guess. Best for any kind of acid distress. Keep them handy in the pocket roll. Keep your tummy under Tums control. The modern Tums formula has never been surpassed for effectiveness. Always carry Tums, 10 cents. Three roll pack, a quarter. Or get the new six roll Tums pack with free metal carrier, only 49 cents. And now... Starring Mr. Myron McCormick, Act Three of Madman of Manhattan. Uh, Nicholas Westland speaking. Yes, I know, sir. I'm glad you had the faith to play along with. 
Yeah, I know. It was pretty extreme. Here, I'll let you talk to Lieutenant Creekmore. Hello, Commissioner. Uh, Avery's wife and child, they're okay. Got a little scared when Abbott fired those two shots in the ceiling. Yeah. Yeah, I, I know, but that's what got the confession out of Avery. I know he shouldn't have brought the gun. We didn't bargain on that. Yeah. Yeah, we got it. It's all on tape. Listen. Play it back, boys. I'm just playing the good part. It doesn't matter now. Nothing matters now. You were wrong, I see it. it. See, Kate came to me months uh, before you took the trip. She wanted to leave you. She thought she wanted me. And it was her idea to sign the stock over to me. Everything. And I... I kidded her along. Why not? And then when you were away, she signed the stock over. She found out about Anne and me. It doesn't matter now. I... I tried to talk to Kate. Argument. We had a fight. I didn't mean it. It, oh, it was an accident. I killed her. I fixed it so they'd suspect you. That wasn't hard. It was better than I thought. You seemed to be out, out of your mind. Where did you put her? I, I kept. That's not until they. You get it? Yeah. Well. We'd never have cracked Martin Avery any other way. They wanted to release Lacey Abbott six months ago. Said he was as sane as I am, but I'm glad we waited till he had this worked out in his head. Yeah, you'll have my full report tomorrow. Good night. And thanks, Commissioner, for letting us try it. Well, Lacey, you should be feeling pretty good about all this. Your plan worked out great. You're clear. What difference does that make? He said, Kate came to him. Kate came to him. Suspense, in which Myron McCormick starred in William N. Robeson's production of Madman of Manhattan, written by Gilbert Thomas. In a moment, the names of the supporting players and a word about next week's story of suspense. Money can buy many things, tangible things. It can also help buy many intangible but equally important things. Education, for instance. Today, our public schools are bursting at the seams with record enrollments. There are shortages of everything but pupils. Shortages of classrooms, of facilities, of qualified teachers... New funds must be found to help relieve the pressure on our public school systems if the nation's youngsters are to receive the first-rate education they need. They must not be threatened by second-rate standards. We must face up to the fact that better schools cost money. Let's raise our sights and re-examine our standards. For complete information on how you and your community can make sure your children receive the first-rate education they need, Write to Better Schools, 9 East 40th Street, New York 16. That's Better Schools, 9 East 40th Street, New York 16. Supporting Myron McCormick in Madman of Manhattan were Doris Singleton, Carl Swenson, Barney Phillips, and Norm Alden. Listen. Listen again next week when we return with Frank Lovejoy starring in Death. In box 234, another tale well calculated to keep you in 